Hi friends, it's Nathan and welcome back to my channel. I'm an incoming pharmacy student at the University of Waterloo, so in three weeks I will officially be enrolled in pharmacy school, and I'm also finishing up some courses at Harvard for this semester. Because exams are quickly approaching, and once exams are over, you'll be starting a new term with new courses, I thought now would be the perfect time to start a subject series, giving you tips and advice on how to do well in certain subjects. Now this is the second upload in the series. I already posted chemistry a few days ago. Students that take biology almost always take chemistry as well, so I'll link the video on how I got an A in chemistry right here. In this series, I'll be going over what I did in high school and in university to get top marks in certain subjects. So like I said, chemistry is posted, this one's biology, and the next and last one is going to be English. Those are all three subjects that I did very well in and enjoyed throughout my educational career. And they're often the toughest, so I'm glad to be sharing my tips with you. I'll be putting timestamps for certain topics, so if you're only interested in studying or test taking, homework, whatever that may be, you can just skip to where you want on the bar. But without further ado, here's how I got an A in biology and how you can too. The first step is to take thorough notes, and you do that by annotating in a very particular way. So my notes would always have supplementary information from the class or lecture, I would be defining terms, I would be explaining biological diagrams. I actually filmed a video on how to take notes depending on the subject, because note taking is not a one size fits all system. There is a biology section, so I highly recommend you checking it out, I'll link it above. You're in class and your teacher or prof is giving the lesson and you get to a topic that you just do not understand at all. If 2 plus 2 is 4, right, and 5 plus 5 is 10, okay, what I the fuck is this? Star it or flag it or do whatever you need to remember that you have to ask the teacher or go back to it later on. A lot of the time, especially in high school, I would find myself going back to my teacher and asking, hey, can you please go over this again, but slower. And teachers and prof want to go slow and want to be really thorough, but sometimes they just don't have that luxury of time. They have certain deadlines to meet, they need to cover X amount of information before the midterm or the test, so they can't go super slow. But if you ask them separately to go over and reinforce material, they'll happily accommodate because they understand that not everyone picks up information as fast as the next person, so just let them know and they'll happily accommodate. This is a tip specifically for university students, and that's if you have tutorials, use those opportunities to ask questions. Tutorials are facilitated by upper year students or master students, so they're very knowledgeable in the subject, and sometimes they can even explain topics better than a prof. Because they are students, they're able to use more student-friendly language, they're often a little more understanding too, um, and it's not a bash against profs, but it's just that from student to student, you can really feel the struggle and you can really relate. I'm just like you. I think that's true. You're just like me. Yes, I can see. Ask them questions and definitely, definitely use them to your advantage. In my genetics class, we took a really deep dive into the lac operon, and for some reason, it was just not connecting with me. I was not getting it, and like the circumstances, so if something is turned off, would this be made in excess or would it be made the same or less? It was just not clicking with me, so I decided to seek out my TA rather than my prof because I knew that this would take more than like 10 minutes to explain. So I booked an appointment with my TA and we sat there for 30 minutes just going over scenarios, going over material. She was very nice and very approachable and so we sat there and she was explaining things and going over scenarios with me for almost half an hour, which is a time that you wouldn't be able to get from a prof because they're so busy. So that's just something for you to look into. As for homework, I'm not gonna lie to you, I didn't do any. I don't find biology homework helpful and I'm all about working smart, not hard. So I honestly did not waste my time with homework. Instead, I would use that time to go over the lecture again and make sure I understood every single thing. And if I didn't understand anything, I would take the time to research and find out the answer. So Google was truly my best friend. I used my textbook, online resources, journal articles, anything that I could get my hands on that would help make information more clear. I would be utilizing it. And one thing also is that while you're doing your research, if you find any interesting information, write it down in your notes. I'll explain why you're going to do that later on in the video when I talk about test taking. 
but really try researching the answer yourself. If you're in high school, this will develop your skills for university, and if you're in university, this will further develop any research skill that you will need to have in the future. If you've exhausted all your research, then I would go see an academic, so your teacher or your prof. Profs have office hours that you can attend to. I personally never saw any office hours for biology, at least not that I can remember. Instead, I would usually just email them. It saves my time, it saves the prof's time. So if an explanation or response can be made in a couple of sentences, I'd say go for an email. If you're really confused about a certain process or a concept, then I would go see in-person help. But most of the time, online virtual help was enough and that's pretty much all that you have right now because we're an online school. So definitely just reach out using email. Studying. To study biology, I used a method called active recall. I would aggressively condense the notes that I was making throughout the course and then try to test myself using specific prompts and I would use a whiteboard for that. I also would kind of teach the information because if you're able to teach concepts, then you definitely understand it. I have a whole video on how to study for different subjects depending on whether the course is content-based or subject-based. Biology is a content-based course, so you'll find all my tips for biology in that section of the video. Again, all the work is done for you, so you can just click the above link here. In high school and university, I never studied for biology in a group setting. I don't think that it's effective. It may be for you, but at least for me, I don't see how it could be because a lot of it is just active recall and memory. So it's not like you're trying to solve things. It's really just remembering and understanding content, which you can do perfectly by yourself. You can look at your notes or your textbook for subheadings. And then once you have a subheading, that is going to be your prompt. Then try to regurgitate every single information that you remember based on that prompt. And that's how you can test yourself. There is so much to cover in biology. It's so dense. It's so heavy. And this may sound harsh, but you really don't have time to waste on ineffective study sessions or ineffective study strategies. Honestly, if you do not understand something and if you have a question, ask your prof, ask your friend, and then just get back to your studying. That's all that's necessary. There are other courses which work great in a group setting. Biology, just not so much. Test taking. Now, I would say this is probably one of the most important parts of this video because you can do all that you want during studying, but when it comes to it, at the end of the day, all that matters is the test. So first tip is understanding the format, right? So biology is usually short answer or multiple choice. You'll probably be getting more short answer in high school and more multiple choice in university. Let's talk about short answer questions first. When doing short answer questions, you wanna be looking at the allocated marks. If there are four marks for this question, give five. You wanna be adding an extra one as your backup. So with biology, it's very common to forget maybe a step or to explain a step unclearly and as a result you get docked and you lose the point but if you have an extra that you can fall back on it'll make up for your lost one another tip is that you want to be including as many keywords as possible so any of those bolded terms that you saw in your notes or in your textbook add those in at every opportunity i was shoving in those words left and right because it was what was making my question look professional, look scientific, and just really show the teacher or prof or whoever's marking my test that I really know what I'm talking about and that I'm able to communicate that scientifically. Sometimes I would even go above and beyond to explain terms that I was using. So it wasn't just enough for me to add a term in, I put the definition of that term in as well, making it super cohesive, a very full and informative answer. And the last tip for short answer questions is to include out of classroom information. So remember when I told you to jot down any interesting information you found during your research? You're gonna wanna include that into your responses if relevant, or even if you heard something in the news or you saw an article about it, include any relevant information. This will show your application skills that you're able to take what you learned in the classroom and find connections and apply it to real world settings, which is pretty much what science is all about. I'm telling you this will be your cherry on top. This is what's gonna make your prof or teacher be like, oh, okay, okay so you know, okay, he's not okay. a regular student. This student is interested in biology, he's passionate about biology, and will be giving you all the marks. So that is something teachers love to see, and will just help you get a better mark. The other format you'll see with your biology test is multiple choice. Now multiple choice is very tricky in biology because detail and wording is placed with a very high importance. 
You want to be making sure that your notes are very specific and you're using correct terminology because these multiple choices will be testing on that specificity. Your option A versus option B may only differ by a few words and it may seem interchangeable because the words, I guess, in English can mean the same thing, but biologically it doesn't. And that's how it can trip you up. And that is what you want to be avoiding. Another tip is to choose the option that you know is right, not the one that you want to be right. With biology, you'll often find answers that are very long, very detailed, and sound really good. I guess like sound pleasing to the ear. But then you have another answer that is simple and is right, but you know, your brain tricks you into choosing the more full answer. And that's where teachers will try to get the upper hand on you. Go with what you know. If you see something in your notes and it's right, just choose it. It's better to be safe than to maybe take a risk and choose something that you're not 100% confident with just because it sounds better or looks better. And sometimes if the question that you chose is right but the prof marks it as wrong, but it is a correct answer, you could potentially argue for that and your prof may or may not change it accordingly depending on how the entire class answers it, but it's always better to go with safer answer. Last tip is that everyone knows that if you don't know a question, you skip it and you go back to it later, right? That couldn't be more true for biology because that actually works in your advantage. Biology is very interconnected and sometimes if you skip a question that you don't know, maybe 10, 20 questions down, you'll run into a new question that gives you a hint about the one that you were stuck on. And as a result, you get the right answer. So definitely don't stress too much about it. Just skip it, go back to it, and there's a high chance that it may come to you later on because of the intertwinedness of questions and topics in biology. So you wrote your test and you're done, right? Not exactly. Go back and review it. A lot of people don't do this and I think it's a critical step in the learning process. Go back to see what you messed up on, what topics you were unclear about, so that you could touch up on them for the next test or next exam, or if the course is over, you could see a recurrent topic in the next course that you would regret not reviewing. Another smart thing to do is to look at how the question was marked. So if you lost marks on a question that you thought you know you answered perfectly, see what the examiner was looking for that you weren't able to meet, and then you'll learn how to answer questions better. Part of the game is not just knowing information, it's being able to deliver the information in a way that's pleasing to the examiner. That's just something that you will eventually learn and you just need to practice, and the best way to do that is by reviewing to see how you can improve for the next time. The last thing I wanna talk about is not something that you can do physically, but it's more of something you do internally, and that's your mentality while doing biology. Your mentality has to be focused on diligence. Biology is a very heavy and long subject. There is a lot of material for you to cover, and it can be boring sometimes, and that's when you have to just push through, even though you're tired, even though you're exhausted. You have to be diligent in your studying. Truthfully, biology is not the hardest course, but because of how much content you have to go through, it makes it hard. And it's not a course you can study in a very short amount of time. It takes me around three hours to study for one chapter of biology, and that's why my study schedule is very important because I can't fall behind, because I can't cram two chapters in one day, or I'd like not to at least. Three hours for each chapter when there's 12 chapters that's 36 hours. That's a lot of studying. I had to wake up at 3 in the morning, the day of my midterm, to finish the three chapters that I didn't get to. It was awful, and um, waking up at 3 a.m. was not pleasant at all. So that's where you have to really push yourself. Even when you don't want to study biology every single day, even when you don't want to spend three hours of your time going over mitosis or whatever you need to study, just pushing through and knowing that it's worth it and you want to get a good grade, that is how you're ultimately going to get the best mark. And honestly, there's nothing more satisfying than being able to go through a hundred multiple choice questions or showing how much you understand and how much you know about a certain topic through a short answer question that you can just write for days and you're filling out the space and you want to write more. Biology is a very interesting subject and it's one of those courses where if you put the work in, you'll get the outcome.
But that is everything that I did to get an A in biology. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. Let me know how you're finding biology. If you're taking it this semester or in the next, let me know. I respond to every single comment. And if you want to see more from me, whether that's the next and final uh, video in the series, which is going to be on English, make sure to subscribe. I will be starting pharmacy school in January. I will be moving to Waterloo, living in a place of my own, and really beginning this new endeavor in my life. So if you're interested in that, make sure to hit the post notifications. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'll link it below. You can find day-to-day -day content from me. And I will see you friends in the next video. Bye.